Hey there, uh, YouTube land. Big Dave here. Um, you know, I got a couple of questions about practicing overtones and um, having problems with that. So here's what I think. Um, I think that when you um, go to practice your overtones, use a stiffer reed, one that's hard to blow into. Or take a regular reed and clip clip the top off some to give it more resistance. Because what this is going to do is it's going to force you to use more air and um, support the air more. Okay, if the reed is too soft, you could use less air. Um, so. So, if you have a stiffer reed, you, you're going to be forced to bring your airflow to the next level to make the sound. So, this is not the kind of read I would necessarily want to be using like on a gig or whatever. It's it's good for practice though to work on the air. You could even go stiffer than this. Um, you know, like, uh, I don't know, uh, get a read that's not so easy to play. And then um, start, you know, down on your low B or B flat. <laughs> Got this weird vibration going on. I, I don't know if it's on the video or not. <laughs> can practice them really on every note. Here's here's uh, you know A. You know, I know um in the one there's one video of um, of Joe Allen and he's talking about just using a little bit of uh, skin of the lip here, you know? Now, years ago, I mean, uh, when I studied with Joe, I was young. I was about, um, oh, I don't know, 18, I guess, or so, when I used to go. Had a couple lessons with Joe Allen, and um, but he never talked about that. We were doing some other stuff, you know, like the um, tongue position, things like that, uh, air. Uh, uh, some of the in-out stuff on the lip. But I watched on the video where he talks about he's only using a little bit of the skin. And, and that's actually he, right on the money. You know, because as I'm doing this, <laughs> you know, all those notes. But you can practice harmonics, uh, overtones on any any key any note it doesn't matter you know even uh, open no fingers down and then later you can start to really slow that down and separate them uh, you know I mean just hold them out
you know, and, and so on and so on. But after a while, then you can use certain dedicated fingerings to put them into your patterns. <laughs> There are a lot of fingering charts like on um, the internet. Um, and sometimes you need to add uh, keys to tune them like A. I'm using either of these three fingers with it. If I'm using two and three to get my A out. And then after I put my three fingers down, if I also hit the D key, I can make my B flat. That's my fingering. My D to the E flat. I use um, these two and the octave key. You know, uh, E, I would push this side key and this. So, I mean, but you have to look and try on your horn what, which overtones work, which harmonics work, and what fingerings. You know? Um, like the high C, I like to use these two and these two with the um, thumb, and then I add this key on the side, the high F key and the D key to go to C sharp. I use this for D. You know. Then if I'm gonna go even higher, you start to use the low B, the low B flat, it depends. Like I know if I wanna play like an F above the D, I'm gonna actually use my B fingering because on my horn it plays better in tune. Although the F is really an overtone off of the B flat, for, for this horn or, you know, just the way I play, it's better if I use the B. <laughs> know whatever um, the point is you know if you go to practice these um, like I said use a little stiffer read uh, and most of it is in the tongue position yet yeah. you know where you're singing if you sing he oh, yeah. sing the notes first and the rest is um, you know just the way you direct your air uh, you do have to put a little bit of um, a little bit of pressure onto the read you know uh, now I read on the internet you know some people say oh yeah no um, you don't do anything but you you do have to put a little bit uh, uh, give it a little help with the read that's what I'm saying use a stiffer read just give it a little um, push not much I mean you're not biting through your lip but you just need to help it along to go um, you, you know, most of it is going to be with the tongue position and the throat and everything, but, you know, just, and also, like Joe Allard says in his video, get to the, you know, use only a little bit of skin already when you get to those super high notes. Now, if you watch Lenny Pickett, he tends to, when he goes super high, he puffs out his cheeks to make a, um, a, a change in his oral cavity. The whole thing changes, you know, when he does that. You can watch his video. Um, but anyway, so I don't want to go over 10 minutes here. All right, so I hope this is helpful. And, um, uh, you know, just it's a lot of air and, and you know, just adjust your tongue. Uh, you know, he position, he, you know, and uh, that's it. Okay, look, so uh, um, thanks for the comments and for watching along. And uh, if you're not on the Facebook blog, you know, just look under uh, Big Dave Wilson saxophone blog and uh and join up okay catch you later bye bye